Hey, what's up? This is Corey Wong. I am here to show you how to master the pentatonic scale. Today, I'm gonna to be giving all the exercises on the guitar. The key to unlocking the pentatonic scale and really having it mastered is being able to do it vertically, horizontally, and diagonally. So that way it doesn't seem in your mind or in your playing like you're just sitting in the box, sitting in one of these boxes. Because I, as a listener, I, as a professional guitar player, can hear when somebody's just playing inside the box, when they're just playing inside one shape. It's just so obvious as a guitar player, as somebody who knows what that is, it's like, oh, I don't have to see you doing it. I can just hear it and I know exactly what you're doing. So this sort of thing, these sort of exercises are gonna really help you unlock the pentatonic scale in a brand new way. But the real secret is for you to put in the work on the exercises that I give you. Let's get started. For those of you that are guitar players, hopefully the majority of you know the five shapes of the pentatonic scale. If you don't, I'm gonna show you now. We're gonna work in C major today, which is the same as A minor. And just for review, these are all five shapes of the pentatonic scale on guitar. So that's the way that most people practice the pentatonic scale and that's fine. That's how I practiced it and that's how most people that I know practiced it. But I wanna show you some ways to deepen your understanding and knowledge of the pentatonic scale by showing you some different ways of going through it. We're gonna do the exact same shapes, but this time we're gonna play two strings at once. When I do this, I'm gonna do all downstrokes and I'm gonna do palm muting just for the sake of clarity and transience. The most comfortable shape that everybody knows is this one. There's always a bottom and a top side of every pentatonic shape. It's always two notes per string in the way that we learn it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do adjacent strings, bottoms, tops, bottoms, tops, bottoms, tops, bottoms, tops, bottoms, tops, like this. So now watch this, here's the exercise. We're gonna do that concept up and down all five shapes. Okay, now take that exact same thing. We're gonna speed it up a little bit and let's get your right hand technique in there because I'm a right hand technique guy. So I'm gonna do all down strokes, palm muting again. I'm gonna do two hits per pair of notes like this. So there we go. Your right hand might be a little bit tired afterwards. I was rifling up and down, up and down each shape, but that sort of thing is gonna really help your brain, really help your hands internalize this a little bit more. Okay, so that to me is a more 
vertical way of learning and playing the pentatonic scale. The next way that I think about mastering the pentatonic scale is playing it horizontally. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on the low strings to the high strings. We're gonna play up the pentatonic scale one string at a time. Okay, so we're staying with C major pentatonic or A minor pentatonic, however you think about it. And it's like this. If you want to do open strings, you can. But that's the concept. We're going all the way up and down the neck. There we go. So now you're gonna have to get away from just being stuck inside the box. I've heard so many people say, oh, I love the pentatonic scale, but it feels like I'm stuck inside this box. Well, that's because you're probably taught the pentatonic scale with the box. Instead of just thinking vertically like this, now we're thinking horizontally, and we have to think about the intervals, and we have to think about the actual notes that are in the pentatonic scale. The other way to practice that, let's take it from the top of the first string down and back up, and then we go in the reverse direction. So it goes like this. There you go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing as we did with the first. We're gonna do two note pods on adjacent strings. And when I talk about positions and when I talk about two note pods on the guitar, positions are really the shape that you're in. That shape. When I talk about two note pods, I'm thinking about this sort of thing. Just a little two note grouping. That's the phrase that I use, two note pods, whatever, two note groupings. Those two note pods can stay in position or they can move across positions. Okay, so I'm gonna start up high on the neck. I'll go down and back up. So it'll be like this. All right, now we're gonna do the double down stroke on each pod.
That's practicing the pentatonic scale both vertically and horizontally. Now, I want you to practice it diagonally. Now, what does that mean? In my case, the way that I like to practice it diagonally is to go two notes and then three notes per string, like this. So I'll start on the fifth of the scale. So just because it's low on the fretboard, so. That makes sense? So we go two notes and then three notes. Two notes, three notes. Two notes. And the same thing back down. Okay, so here it is in all five shapes of that. Now the kind of lines you can get out of that, that's what it is fast. And what it really can act as is a transition point between these two pentatonic shapes. And this. Now all of a sudden I've seamlessly flowed between these two pentatonic shapes and even kind of up in here. Okay, so practicing vertically, horizontally, and diagonally really helps you get a better understanding of the fretboard and how the pentatonic scale is laid out on it. Another way to kind of combine those sort of things, some extra bonus kind of easy ways to practice as well, is you kind of go up one shape and down the other. Up one shape, down the other, like this. and so on and so forth. That sort of thing is gonna help you get up, down, up, down. It's gonna be a little more fretboard, just familiarity, but the key to unlocking the pentatonic scale and really having it mastered is being able to do it vertically, horizontally, and diagonally. Some of this might be really new to you. That's totally okay. Spend five, 10 minutes every day just familiarizing yourself with each of those directions. Maybe you're somebody who didn't learn those five shapes and those five boxes. Get on it. Maybe you've never played horizontally on the fretboard. Get on it. Maybe you've never played diagonally. Start working on that right now. The more consistent your practice, the better results you'll get. Now, everything that we worked on today is an exercise. These are exercises for your brain and your fingers to get more familiar with the scale itself and more familiar with the fretboard itself. That being said, nothing I did here was very musical. And there's a big difference between having good technique and understanding a scale and playing a good musical phrase. Musicality is so much more than just scales and technique and understanding the fretboard. These sort of things are just tools that can allow us to not have to think about it. So when our brain does hear, when our ears hear a musical phrase, we don't have to worry about, I don't know where this is on the guitar. We've put in the time to learn this on the guitar, so that way when it does come time to actually play music, we aren't bound by our limitations of technique. Okay, so it's important to separate musical practice and musical ideas from technical practice and technical understanding of your instrument. Now, if these sort of lessons, if this sort of stuff is of interest to you, I have an entire guitar course. You can find it at coreywongguitarcourse.com. Check it out. There is over five hours of lessons. There's a lot of stuff, right hand, left hand, how to practice, how to prepare for things, and even just my exact practice routines. So 
Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.